Well, Bennett Kessler filed this following report. Depending on how you look at things, Inyo County could be a total of $6.3 million in the hole in what the county administrator called a structural deficit when he reported to the Inyo County Board of Supervisors on Tuesday. Inyo CAO Kevin Caruncio said the $6.3 million could be a hard number. He added that department revenues could also be overstated, which would make the deficit even bigger. The other fact is what's called the fund balance, which means how much is left over from last fiscal year that could offset this year's deficit. That number could be as high as $3 million or $4 million, which brings things back to the $2 million shortfall created by raises. Now, Caruncio also had heard that some people thought he might want to pay down the deficit with the solar deal in the works with the Department of Water and Power, which was around $4.5 million. Said Caruncio, quote, to say we were hanging our hat on the solar revenue is complete and utter nonsense, end quote. Caruncio then went on to the library and said the director was asked to present an operations plan by March of this year. It did not come in. Caruncio said, quote, to suggest the board or CAO is balancing the budget on the back of the library is not right, end quote. He said the library lost 7% of its budget this year, not 27%. However, other statistics show that the library staff has declined by nine people out of 16 in the past five years. Caruncio said relying on the fund balance to balance this year's budget is, quote, a crapshoot and risk, end quote. He said the following fiscal year could be even tougher. There was some discussion of all departments taking a cut for the $6.3 million structural deficit. Caruncio did not recommend the use of reserves. Now from here on, the CAO said there will be department meetings and budget workshops toward balancing of the budget. Departments will look at how much they would have to cut in order to share in the deficit, whether it be $1.8 million, $2.3 million, or $6.3 million. Now, Jeff Griffiths, supervisor, said once the chronic deficit is cleared up, Inyo County could move toward positive things like economic development and other forward-thinking projects. Supervisor Linda Arcularia said she would count on $1 million less in the usual $4 million fund balance and would not plan to totally eliminate the structural deficit this year. CAO Caruncio finally said, quote, I know all of this is not great news, end quote. And I'd like to add that Bennett Kessler talked to four Inyo County supervisors, Jeff Griffiths, Matt Kingsley, Mark Tillemans, and Rick Pucci about the budget. And you can see those stories on our website, sierrawave.net. Well, Bennett Kessler also filed this story. With a quick move, the Inyo Public Works Department presented a bid award for construction of the new animal shelter to the Inyo supervisors at their meeting on Tuesday. Now, the low bid went to Rudolph Construction, $699,960. Inyo County Deputy Works Director Jim Tatum said the organization iCare would provide $416,000 of that money and Inyo County $375,000. Later, the Inyo County Board of Supervisors voted unanimously to award the bid. Now, Jim Tatum said that county crews would have the building pad laid down by next Wednesday. Now, Ted Shady, president of iCare, said iCare funds raised would pay for the $416,000 share, including $25,000 from the recent Lions and Rotary Club's Spaghetti Dinner Fundraiser. Shady said the iCare board agreed to authorize an agreement with the county and would write the county a check. Shady said iCare formed in 1997 and saw the condition of the old Inyo County Animal Shelter in Big Pine. Now the goal became a new shelter. The old facility was constructed as a milk barn at the county farm in the 1920s and was never intended to be used as a shelter for companion animals. Now the new shelter will house about 40% more dog kennels and cat cages, will have outdoor areas for the pets, feeding and grooming rooms, and a comfortable space for the public and the county staff. Completion of the new building is set for December. Now much earlier, Ted Shady had pointed out that, quote, by providing a center for both pets and people that will be more spacious, more comfortable, and more efficient, the dogs and cats will be better cared for, and the public will have a pet adoption center that we can all be proud of, end quote. 
Well, with the 4th of July coming up on Friday, all local law enforcement agencies are urging the public to use extreme caution regarding the use of fireworks. All fireworks are illegal on all Forest Service and BLM lands, and the Bishop Tribal Police Department has established a zero tolerance for the use of illegal fireworks on the Bishop Paiute Indian Reservation. Now, a press release states that while the Bishop Tribal Police Department wants everyone to enjoy the 4th of July holiday, they are warning individuals that under the Bishop Paiute Tribe's nuisance ordinance, the use of illegal fireworks is a citable offense, and each citation carries a possible fine of up to $500. Now, the press release also notes that with the extremely dry conditions that exist right now, even a small spark can cause a fire. Also, the town of Mammoth Lakes reminding residents and visitors that all fireworks are prohibited in the town of Mammoth Lakes, and there will also be a zero tolerance policy with respect to the possession and use of the fireworks. So let's all be careful out there this holiday weekend. Now there will be fireworks shows throughout the Eastern Sierra on the 4th of July, including the Independence Airport and the Eastern Sierra Regional Airport in Bishop, as well as the great fireworks show at Crowley Lake. Now for information on the Crowley Lake fireworks show, call the Crowley Lake Fish Camp at 760-935-4301 or check out the Town of Mammoth Lakes website. If you would like information on the day-long celebration in Independence, you can call 760-937-8144. Also, the annual Big Pine Firemen's 4th of July fun run and breakfast will start off the day in Big Pine, which also includes a chili cook-off and a salsa contest at Mendenhall Park. For more information on the Big Pine festivities, call 760-937-1146. Law enforcement agencies in Inyo County will enforce no parking zones along some city streets and canal roads during the 4th of July and into Saturday. Also, a reminder about the Mammoth Lakes 4th of July Parade, always a festive time celebrating our nation's birthday. Chuck Scatolini and I will be at our usual spot on Main Street in front of Kittredge Sports and, yes, across from Mammoth Liquor. Now, the parade will start at 11 a.m., and this year the route is reversed. They're going to be starting on Old Mammoth Road before going up Main Street. Now, after the 4th of July Mammoth Lakes Parade, folks might want to check out the Fire Safety Fun Festival at the U.S. Forest Service Station. That's at Main Street and Sawmill Cutoff Road by Shady Rest Park. Hey, Smokey Bear will be there helping to commemorate his 70th birthday. So there are plenty of activities, including the Death Valley Railroad car running at Laws Railroad Museum this holiday weekend. Now, if you'd like to get a jump on the celebrating, the Paiute Palace Casino will be holding its fireworks extravaganza. And that's going to be Thursday night. They're going to have live music and a food and craft fair. Should be a great time all around the Eastern Sierra. A very happy birthday, America. Well, let's head back out to the new June Lake Brewing. Sierra Wave Media's Rob Gill filed this story. My name is Justin Walsh, and we're at June Lake Brewing's grand opening. As you can see, we have quite a bit of uh, spectators here. Um, we're making some pretty good beer, and uh, basically where we came from, originally uh, my wife and I grew up in San Diego County, so uh, Cardiff for me, Solana Beach for her, Sarah. She's down there, man, in the bar. That's not her, not the ugly guy with the beard. Anyway, so we, uh, you know, grew up loving craft beer, and she actually had worked for Green Flash in Dallas Point um, in a marketing and management role, and uh, I had worked for Alaskan Brewing during my uh, formative uh, college years at SDSU. And we decided about four years ago we wanted to move up here to June Lake. Well, it's beautiful. How are we going to do it? So... You know, I interviewed with the mountain, did all that jazz. We weren't going to be able to raise a family like that. So, love craft beer, know how to make it well. She's been home brewing for 15 years. I've been doing the same. Her dad has been a home brewer for 30. So, ah, you know, sell everything, cash in all our favors, take out a couple of loans, you know, beg, borrow, and plead, and uh, build a brewery. So we did. And basically, um, you know, we like to make big San Diego style aggressive beers. However, at the same time, we absolutely love this area. So we took the uh, resources available, the water, 
June Lake has some of the best water on the planet. And as it turns out, beer is 98% water. So do the math. Um, you know, we're making some good beers. With our background as well, we were able to kind of combine the premium ingredients that we source from Washington and also uh, other places in the Northwest as far as grain and some hops goes and created some good beer. I mean, they're pretty happy about it. Hey, you guys like the beer? So yeah, basically that's what we did. And uh, today's our first day opening. It's the summer solstice, longest day of the year. So good day to have a beer. So we're actually located in the heart of June Lake Village. We're directly behind the general store. However, you access our location via turning right on Knoll Avenue where the Tiger Bar is, turning left on Crawford Avenue, which is your first stop sign that you come to. And we're about a block and a half down on the left-hand side big ugly brown warehouse that eventually will look a little bit better. Right now we're just trying to get, you know, good beer out the door and uh, good people in the door. If you would like to contact us, you can check out our website at www.junelakebrewing.com. You can also see our Facebook at facebook.com slash junelakebrewing. And uh, if you'd like to email us, you can go onto the website and there's a reach out form put in your information, your uh, GPS coordinates, and uh, yeah, we'll send you out uh, bi-weekly booze letter updates, letting you know what we got brewing and what we're doing. Well, thanks, Rob. June Lake Brewing, a great addition to the Eastern Sierra. We'll be back with more news.